think our taxes are used well by our county. We have been divided for a long time along party and tribal lines to a level where we forget we need real solutions for our problems. Fear and hatred seem to be defining our politics. This politics affects our daily lives. Nairobi has great plans, great laws, good strategies that are not well implemented. Our problems cannot be solved by the people who cause them. We need a new leadership that is godly, compassionate, and true to the needs of the people. So my name is Suzanne Silentoy. I am a public policy analyst. Um, I am also, I have also been involved in active politics. In 2017, I vied for the Nairobi senatorial seat um, as an independent candidate and as the youngest, um, I guess, at the time. Um, in addition to that, I, uh, I currently run a YouTube channel and a podcast called Is That So with Silentoy, where we do a simplified version of civic education that um, just allows people to get a better understanding of government and what, how government works. Uh, and then hopefully through this, we can create a generation that is politically empowered. An ombudsman doesn't have to be a man. It can be a body or an office. And uh, this body or office uh, or someone is responsible for tackling improper administration in the public sector. So basically, this person is responsible for investigating you know, uh, abuse of power or unfair treatment or, you know, delay in services or any sort of injustice that happens within a government office. I am 27. <laughs> I will be 28 this year. Um, I got into politics at the age of 23. Um, and this is because I, I worked in the health development space for a bit and um, I got very frustrated by the public sector um, and how just things were working in general and I decided I needed to do something about it and so I thought politics would be the most meaningful way I could engage at the time and that's what I did. Um, I'm also actively involved in this space because I feel like there's a gap um, in terms of participation of women and young people in general in politics um, and I think if that changes um, probably more people will start engaging and therefore we can get better results. So. I know it's a young age, but uh, I think this is the space that I see would have the most impact and I'm willing to you know, put enough time in that space. <laughs>Young people are not in this space for a valid reason and um, the reason is because it looks very scary, um, it looks very messy and dirty and you kind of don't want to get involved in that. Um, that's understandable. Um, however, um, I think the more we realize just how much politics affects our lives, every single aspect of our lives, then the more we'll be concerned about it and probably we'll try and do something about it. Um, I think getting into this space for me has been a very eye-opening space in terms of just seeing what gaps are there, what needs to be done. Um, I've, I, since the elections, I've been able to work very closely with uh, organizations such as the African Union uh, in various uh, capacities, but also in uh, observing elections in different countries and just seeing how the challenges that we have in Kenya are very similar in, in the African continent. and. Um, if we are able to just continue to see and to open our eyes towards these things, then we will be able to actually do something about it. And um, and yeah, so I continue to do that. In fact, I, I went to school, I studied a master's in public policy and public administration um, so that I can understand this space more and just be able to know um, what exactly is the issue, how can I identify the issue better, what am I able to do, what is within reach, what is not reachable, um, so that I'm able to also, you know, uh, look at my goals and be realistic about them, look at the goals that I have for the country and also just be a little bit realistic about them, but at the same time knowing, knowing how to, to engage meaningfully uh, and what to do, you know, just to, to be better informed. And so um, I think being in this space has been quite eye-opening for me. This has not always been my dream. Um, I think as a child, I grew up normal childhood. I went to I went to Westlands Primary. I went to Riara Primary. I went to Moy Girls School, Nairobi. I was not a prefect. I went to when I was in KU. I was not a student leader. 
Um, so I just, I, I'm just your average child that you will find. Um, I think the thing that has always been, um, that has been consistent in my life is um, I've seen now that every space that I was in, I'd always pick out a, a challenge and I'd try to address it. Um, so for example, when I was in uni, I did a, a bachelor's degree in music in KU. Um, and part of my uh, dissertation was, uh, my, my thesis was about professionalism in the music industry because I met so many young musicians who are extremely, extremely talented, uh, but they were not able to make ends meet. And, and it used to bother me quite a bit, like why, why isn't someone able to use their talent to make money? Um, and so through that, like I was able to form something with uh, my classmates. We were able to come up with a music business of sorts. So we give a professional front for this musician so that it's, it, you know, they're able to be taken seriously by society, but also they take themselves seriously as professional musicians. Um, and I think that, that has been the trend in my life, basically. It's just I find a challenge and I try to address it. Uh, and I think this is what led me into this path anyway. Um, so even as I was working in the NGO space, in the health sector, I saw the challenge that was there in the, you know, in the public sector and I was like, I kind of want to do something about this. So I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, and I've grown up in a family where I've always been encouraged to, to do what comes, you know, naturally to me. Um, I have a very good support system. I'm very lucky <laughs> to have this kind of family in my life. Um, so yeah, and, and the, even the issue of being a woman, I'm from a pastoralist community, uh, but uh, I've, I've seen my mom be a strong woman. She's very well educated. Uh, she works. Um, and so I look up to her in so many ways and she has broken a lot of women barriers for me in my life and so it's never been a factor for me so yeah so I, that's my childhood in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> okay so 2017 was slightly less dramatic mm. because of the transition yeah, so yeah. now we are supposed to have a new president mm. yeah. so obviously it's gonna get a bit murky because yeah. we don't know who it is but yeah. before it was like the sitting president is trying to remain yeah, yeah. so it wasn't as extra dramatic as yeah. it is now yeah. however the rhetoric was still quite toxic i think the first time i entertained the thought of getting into politics um was when uh, so i come from a, a place called maralal in samburu and um, there's one of our neighbors actually said they wanted to be an mca and it was like oh even nani wants to get into politics uh, and it was like so, so what is stopping me from doing something about this? Um, that, that's the first time I entertained it and I thought, okay, so what would be useful for me to, which space would be useful for me to get into? And, um, and I thought maybe, you know, I looked at enough factors and uh, I considered devolution because I feel like devolution, you know, brought up a lot in, especially in places that were initially, are still marginalized for a long time. Um, and I thought this is a space that I would want to defend. And in addition to that, healthcare is in that, is in that space, uh, which I was in and I wanted to do something about. So I was like, okay, what would be useful for, for me to, what do I know? I know Nairobi because I've grown up, I've been brought up and raised here. Uh, and what would be useful for me to contribute to Nairobi in terms of devolution, I thought Senate. Okay, so I entertained the thought for a bit. Um, and some people might say this was a moment of madness, but I, I claim it and I, <laughs> I own my moment of madness. And uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to find out how this thing is done. So I walked into an, actually I googled it first and there were, the requirements were like not that many. I was like, this, this can't be right. <laughs> so I went to the IABC office. Um, and I remember when I got there, the, the person who received me at the gate was a, was a guard and he asked me, what are you looking for, young girl? <laughs> he said, young girl. And I'm like, I'm looking for the qualifications to buy for Senate. He's like, oh, for your father. Um, I'm like, no, for me. What, for your uncle? Well, how old are you? Who can ID? <laughs> so he questioned me quite a bit and then he gave me the forms and I actually took them home. and. The, um, I think at this point it still didn't hit me what I was, I was doing um, and uh, you know I went through the process, I registered uh, at IABC, I registered through the Register of Political Parties because I was an independent candidate um, and then it finally hit me the day I, the, my first day of campaign. So my campaign was a more of like a door to door kind of campaign. Um, in, in a sense, uh, I didn't go to every door because Nairobi is huge, uh, but I went to specific places and I'd com campaign one-on-one -on -one mainly. Um, so the first campaign site that I went to was Kibra. 
Um, I've been to Kibra so many times. I was in my girls, which is right next to Kibra. We lived close to that place for quite a while. So I was like, this is familiar ground. But for the first time, I walked into that place and I looked at that place as a problem that I need to fix. And then it dawned on me, oh my God, <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> uh, but really, the I think the, the whole process, like just, uh, I, I kept remembering, why am I doing this? Uh, what is this about? And I kept reminding myself, you remember you were very frustrated about healthcare, you were very frustrated about the country, this is why you're doing this. I think my biggest lesson from this experience was that in as much as politics is extremely difficult, it is doable and that it's not set aside for just a specific few in the country. Um, and the more we realize this, the more we will be able to get into this space and probably do something about it. Um, so yes, that's lesson number one. Politics is difficult, but it is doable and it is a space that we have to occupy. Um, it is difficult because people are not going to give up their seats for you. People are not going to give up the power that they've accumulated for years for you. And so you kind of have to fight your way through it. And um, I, but it's doable, <laughs> that's the point, it is doable. Eventually I got about 32,000 votes and I was like, who are these 32,000 people <laughs> who believed in this tiny little girl who decided she, needs, she wants to do something for this country? And uh, those people give me so much hope, uh, knowing that there are, there are frustrated people in this country who will resonate with, my, with me, with what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and if that is the same thing that you want to do, um, there are people out here who resonate with you and, and I think you should go for it. And then through this is how I ended up starting the YouTube channel and the podcast because I realized that um, a lot of information that we have about politics is very polarized. Uh, it's always attached to a specific individual or um, it's, it's never, you know, neutral and, you know, this is just the, this is just the, the topic as opposed to this topic is nani. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so because of seeing this gap, uh, in addition to that, in, in addition to the polarization of the information, it's also quite a bit inaccessible in terms of where do you even get this information in the first place, even if you want to engage. Um, it's difficult to find out these things and so starting the platform was just a way for me to get uh, information to be more accessible uh, to people. My name is Susan Silantoy and as you know, the aim of this channel is to offer information about how government works and why systems are set up the way they are. This is with the intention for us to understand our role in the governance of this country and through this we can raise a politically empowered generation. I, the dream for me is to live in a country that um, opportunities are available to me without knowing anyone, um, to me and to my counterparts, to people of my generation and the generation that comes after me. Um, my dream is also to be in a country that, you know, is corruption free. I know that sounds very idealistic, but it's just a place where I pay taxes and I feel like my taxes are working for me. That's a dream for me. Um, and, and this is where the journey is going to. How that looks like, whatever form that takes, um, I'm not sure. It's going to keep evolving. Um, I'm going to keep learning. Uh, but, but that is a dream. Um, I do hope one day that I will be the president of this country. Um, Hopefully your first woman president <laughs> coming soon near you. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I, I do hope that I can be able to run this country in a direction that I think would work. Um, and yeah, and hopefully inspire uh, people of my generation and the generation that comes after me to occupy spaces where they feel they're not welcome. Um, because this is your space as well. It's your country. This is where you live. Um, you're probably gonna die here. You're gonna get your children here. You might as well do something about it <laughs> to make it better for yourself. It's very difficult <laughs> uh, to get into politics when you don't have a political party and also issues of tribe come up. So uh, Nairobi is a stronghold of a specific party and therefore when you come in um, as someone who doesn't have a party, who is not necessarily from the right tribe, um, it becomes a big challenge. And that, that I thought was unfortunate uh, because I think there's a lot more that people can offer uh, who are not necessarily in a specific party or also from a specific tribe. So when I'm preparing for an episode, I first of all, I look at what is the current conversation. 
Um, but also in addition to that, I look at things that really matter to to me personally as a young person. Uh, and to, you know, I, I just check what, what, what do I think a young person would want to listen to. Um, and now, in, once I figure out what that is, I just make sure that I go into a lot of research, figure out, okay, first of all, what is the theoretical aspect of it? And then find out what is the talk, what, what is the rhetoric around it uh, in, in the country? And then see how to disseminate this information in a, in, a consumer, in a consumable way, so that I pick out all these things for you and give you what you actually need to know, and then how can you do something about it? Uh, and so for me, it always it's important for you to have an action to it. A, a call to action to it so that I'm not just telling you hey, baby, they've stolen billions <laughs> I'm telling you okay so they've stolen this but this is also how you can do this and this and that this is the way you can engage to this so that we know how to deal with the issue um, and I think that's usually a challenge with politics if you look at Twitter people are angry mad upset about everything uh, but we don't know how to vent our frustrations we don't know where to to place these frustrations in the right place where it, it has an effect, a positive effect. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to, to achieve through the channel. So once we know, uh, then we can know what to do about it. Um, so, so that's just how I go, go about uh, looking at content. What is interesting for you and what can you do about it? So when it comes to parental support, um, I remember when I told my parents that I'm going to buy, I think at first they were like, yeah, okay, uh, <laughs> they thought I was kidding, uh, until I actually came home with the IABC papers and they're like, oh my god, you're serious. Um, and it, it was, um, I think it was that, honestly, I think it was very tough for them. Uh, to allow their daughter to, to get into this space that seems very messy and I'm sure in, from, coming from a protective place. Um, but I, I, I did my best to just explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and eventually they, they bought into it and they, and they decided to support me. And um, I think my parents are unique in that sense because and not a lot of parents would, would, be, would agree to it. They'd be like, stop, you're, you're being dumb, just go away. Um, but my parents have been very critical in, in just every aspect of my life and just being able to impact in my life uh, in a meaningful way and, and they've been very supportive and I think for me that counted the most because I knew if I had support from my family, if I had support from my closest support system, um, then I can face the world, then I can face whoever else comes because I'll always have a place to run to. Uh, and, and I would know that this place is safe <laughs> and it's a place that I can recharge my energies and then go back to face the world because the world is so cruel out here. Um, so I think maybe this would be a chance for me to talk to parents out here that, you know, your kids have dreams and, and goals and ambitions and yes, it is useful to direct them in a meaningful way, um, but it, it is also like critical for you to support them in ways uh, like how my parents did for me because if it wasn't for their support I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation with you um, so yeah just encourage your kids more nurture what you see their strengths are and just allow them to thrive and I think that it, it not only gives them you know the, the support the, the courage but it also places confidence in them knowing that I know these guys believe in me um, and so it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks and that has always been my approach my approach in life well, because I know people around me support me then I am able to to even be confident in in any other space because who are these other people <laughs> the people that matter actually support me um, politics is difficult but politics is doable and, and this is your space to occupy